Hi everyone, it's Az here from Heel vs. Babyface with my review basically for the rest of the Witcher series. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Because I've seen it all now, and uh, I think it's just time that I just go over the whole thing uh, and what I thought about it. Few things I need to clear up first of all. <laughs> yes, yesterday I got my Novograds and my Nilfgaards mixed up because, you know, probably I've got more of the game in my brain than anything. So I'm over it. You can be too. And secondly, when I held up the um, Dahexa uh, and said uh, German, uh, people go, but it's Polish. It's Polish. Look, I know The Witcher originates from Poland. I just thought this was a German production of it. It's called Dahexa, which sounds German. On the back, the language is Deutsch, which is German. So I just thought it was a German production. Very much like this is an American production. If I held this up, if it was this series on Blu-ray and went, uh, The Witcher, The American, and they went, Ugh. So, uh, you know, you can all get over that. That's great, because I am. And then a couple of other things <laughs> that I need to set down, because I, what I don't write, put, oh no, right, let's, let's say this way. If you've just come to this video for affirmation about how you think this is the wrong channel for you, because I'll give my honest opinion about something. If it doesn't align with yours, I'm sorry, I'm not sorry. If you just want one of those channels that reflect back exactly what you think, this isn't the one for you. Because I'm going to like some things, and I'm not going to like other things. And this has got nothing to do with the book series or the game series. So both of the book people and the game people can get back in your boxes. Because I knew that this is what it was going to devolve into. Oh, you don't like this. Oh, you don't understand the book source material. Fuck off. This has got nothing to do. My problems with the Witcher series have nothing to do with the books in general whatsoever. It's to do with the way that the series was put together. And that's what I'm going to discuss. So if you only want to hear what you want to hear, you might be disappointed. And you can dislike you can put an angry comment that's your prerogative to do so i do not mind i do not mind being that person that at least says what they truly think instead of pandering so i did uh leave leave leave, leave some uh concerns uh in the first episode review about the second episode because in the second episode and they're all approximately an hour long uh Geralt only appears in it for less than 10 minutes. And already then, I had the book people on me. Oh, yes, Thus does not understand the source material in the books. It is not just about Geralt, it is about the other... Okay, f off. <laughs> I get that the books isn't just about Geralt. But this is an eight-part series which is called The Witcher. And regardless of whether or not you're a book fan or a game fan, let's just put all the cards on the table and be honest. This wouldn't exist without the game franchise. The vast majority of the people who understand or know the, of The Witcher have been people who've come across the game material as opposed to the book material. The books weren't like worldwide sensations. They weren't. They were uh, more of a cult esque thing than anything. So, when you call a series The Witcher and it's eight parts long, you probably expect a little bit more of The Witcher. And when Henry Cavill was on the screen, I liked him. I did. I think he actually makes a really good Geralt. I like Henry Cavill in general. I think he's got. Uh, a great look, he's, you know, excruciatingly, excruciatingly handsome, <laughs> you know, he's got an, an insanely buff body, he's a good actor, and I think he can, he can uh, emote well and express himself well, so I thought he actually made a very good Geralt, because he ha he also has that sort of simmering, uh, exploding nature inside of him as well, he'll, he'll kind of uh, let things build up, and then when the time is right, then he can explode, like he does in the fight scenes. So, all in all, I was actually really impressed with Henry Cavill's um, exp uh, take on Geralt of Rivia. And again, 
This is a show where he got relegated so much to second spot that even in the last episode, episode eight of the series, he barely shows up. Because this isn't The Witcher, folks. This is Yennefer of Vengabar. This horrible, disgusting person that for some reason everybody bows down to. And that is my major gripe with the series. Because even Siri, very early on, gets relegated to another secondary character. And this just becomes the Yennefer show. And the character of Yennefer is horrible. She is disgusting. A horrible, disgusting person. And that's what I really got pissed off with. Because I am meant to watch this show and... This is the main pushed character, and she's horrible. I didn't have any sympathy for Yennefer. I didn't have any sympathy when she was a hunchback. I didn't have any sympathy when she got changed. I didn't have any sympathy that she couldn't bear children. I had no sympathy for her. Why? Because all throughout her before and after transformation, she was a disgusting person. When she was a hunchback... She was uh, jealous and envious. And, and of all her, pe her peers and friends, causing problems, causing issues. She didn't have particularly any struggles to get over. She meets a guy. The guy likes her for who she is. They get it on. So she's not physically shunned, even though she's a hunchback for you know the first two and a bit episodes. So that part really never came into the equation whatsoever, apart from a small speck in the village that she used to live in before she was sold to the Mages Guild. I'm just going to call it the Mages Guild. And then after she transforms into Yennefer, she wants everything. She's a power-crazed, uh, horrible, megalomaniacal, selfish person. And yet everybody wants to do what Yennefer wants to do. And that was a big issue for me. Because I like to empathise with my characters. I empathised with Siri. I really liked the little bits of Siri's story. This isn't a, oh my god, you like can't take strong women. This isn't anything to do with that. I really enjoyed the Siri storyline because Siri was in trouble. She played that it was, she was in trouble and you felt you felt the anxiety that she was going through. You felt the struggle that she was going through. When she was under threat, you were concerned for her. These were very well done indeed. When she was tricked into believing somebody was somebody that they weren't, you were like, oh, no, 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 this is, this is, this is not good. So you could empathize with Siri, and you could empathize with her plight. But again, he got relegated because this was the Yennefer of Wengerberg, the horrible bitch show. And I hated her. Absolutely hated her. And so it just baffled me the way that people like Geralt would fall in love with her. Yes, I know there's the element with the genie and was it a spell that bound them together and all that kind of stuff. But it just didn't seem to make sense. It didn't seem to make sense the way that everyone just thought she was the most beautiful creature in the world. To be honest with you, I thought they were much... And I don't mean this as shade, but, you know, she wasn't all that. She wasn't all that. She was all right. <laughs> she wasn't all that at all. And yet, everything got built on uh, around her. Uh, the leader of the Mages Guild, who was a much better actress <laughs> as well. Uh, the way that she would always say oh you have this you have this and that and this and you're gonna be great and wonderful and that. it was just so self-validating it was it was sickening absolutely sickening so that was my major concern with the whole witcher series that they put yennefer on this pedestal as the main character relegated siri and geralt to just part-time players and yet she was the worst thing about the show if you ask me disgusting horrible person that I didn't care about, didn't empathize with, and to be honest with you, you know, she could have got bumped off and I was quite happy. 
And fan favourite characters like Triss. Triss was a chocolate fire guard. Useless. Useless. So it, it felt like they really did a disservice. And if the showrunners and the writers actually thought they were creating a, a Yas Queen, an amazing uh, independent woman, then they weren't. They made a fucking bitch. A horrible, disgusting, selfish cow. That's what they made. And so my enjoyment of the show, a lot of the time, I just, I would zone out. I would zone out. Because I had very little interest in what was going on with Yennefer at all. Because I didn't give two shits about her. I really didn't. I wanted more about Ciri. I wanted more about Geralt. You know, in The Witcher, the show named after him. Not the Yennefer of Vengerberg show featuring The Witcher once in a while. Now, it's already been renewed for season two. So, uh, they can course correct if they want to. And again, I emphasize on want to. Um, I think, I'm, when I say I think I'm in the minority, I think most people have gone, oh, this is great, this is wonderful, great. If you like this, wonderful. That That's your cup of tea, that's your kettle of fish. But I, I thought this show was decidedly average because of who they pushed as the main character, how the main character was, and how they got across. And I don't give a flying fuck. If you want to come... Oh, but in the books, Yennefer is... It's, it doesn't work. This is a, an entertainment vessel for people. And so if your protagonist is a cunt, then it's not going to work for a lot of people. And that's where it really fell apart. Look, I'll very briefly mention the wokeness of the show was just, just laughable, to be honest with you, at times. All these... Uh, small little uh, Polish villages in the 1200s, 1300s, whenever it's meant to be set, you know, and you've <laughs> you've got your your diversity of people there. Just made me laugh. I thought let's get let's get Geralt in Africa, get him to some remote African village uh, where there's just like a couple of white guys pottering around in it. All right, <laughs> I'm here, I'm here. <laughs> I mean that that just that was just like chuckling. I've never seen a more diverse middle-aged Europe <laughs> but you know that was that was the, the, we knew what the writers were we knew what they were we knew what they wanted to do they wanted to have a tag now all that kind of stuff so whatever that wasn't my issues with the show oh and I, I do also have to mention that the the way that the series jumped in time that you could have one scene in one time and another scene in another time and then this didn't become known until about episode four or so. Just made everything convoluted and annoying. Because you, were, you, you weren't sure if they were doing something magical. Or whether or not they were doing some sort of... This is happening here and that's happening there. Now flashbacks are okay. Because you have a, a, a chronological order. And then you've got a flashback. And so that that's very... Uh, you know, clear and concise. But this was, this is taken at this year. This, the very next scene is 10 years in the future. Then the scene after that is five years in the past. Then the scene at, and that, and so just, you had to start rebuilding the show after four episodes of, oh, what's, what's going on where and where and where. And I think they were being clever as to where Geralt was going to end up during the, the, uh, uh, the fight on, on uh, the attack on Sintra by Nilfgaard, not Novigrad. Jesus Christ. Do you know how many people lost their shit over that? Get over it. Um, <laughs> fucking. <laughs> uh, it, it, it wasn't, you know, it's like, oh, right. Okay. Oh, so he, he's actually there in the, in the building at the time. And, okay. <laughs> I don't know if it was meant to be some sort of, major reveal or oh moment but it's just like oh right <laughs> because of the way that the time just kept jumping all over the place whatever and then i think at one point they just sort of like ended it and it's uh oh. but that's just that's just uh, a bit of criticism about the way that they they put those moments in but in the books they scoff people don't need to have read the books nor played the video games to watch this so both sides, again, in your boxes. Very minor issues. My big issues were who they pushed as the main character and who they relegated as secondary roles. 
So the big climax for me fell really down, felt damp, felt short, whichever way you want to put it, because I didn't give two shits about Yennefer whatsoever. Um, so yeah, all in all, it, it wasn't bad. Like it, when I say it wasn't bad, it wasn't bad in the way that the, the production was bad. It wasn't. The production was decent. Uh, the costumes, the um, setting, all that were, were wonderful. Uh, the acting, for the most part, was all right. Uh, I, I I didn't gravitate to, to, towards Dandelion at all. Oh, I thought he was annoying as hell. I know some people have gone, oh, he's so funny. He, he, he really annoyed me, and his songs were too contemporary that he was making up. And so that just completely broke my immersion a lot of times. Whenever Dandelion was there... Trying to crack a joke just just took me out of the show. Just broke the immersion all the time. Uh, so I was quite happy when Geralt told him to fuck off, uh, I think, in episode seven. But yeah, obviously, he'll be back. Uh, and it didn't, you know, ah, whatever. So, uh, yeah, it wasn't bad. Like I said, it, the, the production wasn't bad. We're not talking like Batwoman here. We're not talking about a show that's been you know, poorly written with terrible acting and terrible effects. The effects were good. The locations were great. The costumes were wonderful. The sets were awesome. Uh, the acting, like I said, for the most part was good. And when there were people on the screen that I actually wanted to listen to, I would pay attention. But unfortunately, far too often, there were people on the screen who I didn't give two shits about. And that's what pulled me out of the uh, show. Nothing to do with your books or your games. So everyone get back in your box about that sort of stuff. Um, so it's like average for me. Like five, six out of ten. You know, average as a series. Because it just really fell, fell short for me. And, um, you know, I'll probably watch the first, first episode or two maybe of the next season. And, and then I'll kind of see what, you know, if, if it's just doing more of the same, then... I'd probably likely just bow out because um, I need something to interest me in this show and it keeps stifling it and pushing the stuff which I don't. But there you go. That's just my, my opinion that you may or may not agree with. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed the vid or didn't either way. Uh, regardless, if you did, uh, do give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel. If you didn't like it, give it a thumbs down. I don't give a fuck. It's still engagement for me. Uh, follow me on social media and Twitch for live streaming. Links in the description box down below. And I'll be back with some more stuff very soon. You take care. Bye for now.